In this video, I'm going to show you how you can go about editing a Markdown file. Markdown is a lightweight and easy to use syntax that you can use for styling your writing on GitHub. So you can think of Markdown as a really easy way to style text on the web. You control the display of the document, the formatting of words, whether they're bold or italic. You can even add images and create lists. These are just a few things that you can do with Markdown. I'm going to show you some of the basic things that you can do in Markdown in this video. The first thing I need to do is I'm going to want to edit my README file. We're going to be doing this through the GitHub online window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the link that is the README file, which is going to allow me to view the file. I'm going to go ahead and click the pencil icon right here, which allows me to edit this file. When I do that, I'm going to be greeted with the existing text that is here. The existing text was populated because I automatically checked that I wanted to include a README file. README Markdown is pretty easy to use. If you want to create headers, you use the pound or the hash mark. This creates an H1. If you want to create an H2, you'll use two pound marks and an H3 would be three pound marks, and you would go on until you could get to an H6. So I'm going to make an H2 and type introductions. Then I'm going to write the text that I want to be a paragraph. I want my name to be italic. In order to create italic text, you surround the text that you want inside of an asterisk. This will allow you to create italic text. If we want to preview the changes, I can just click preview changes right here, and when I do that, it'll show the new changes. So you can see, here's my H2, and here's the formatting that I just created. Let's continue to edit, so I'm going to go back into Edit File. We're going to change our italic text to bold text. To create bold text, you simply surround the text by two asterisks instead of just one. This will now create bold text. If you wanted to create text that was both bold and italicized, let me show you how we can do that. I'm going to make web developer and designer both italicized and bold. Just like you can create italic text with the asterisks, you can also create italic text by using an underscore. And you'll end your italic text by typing another underscore. So if you want text to be both italicized and bold, you combine the asterisks and the underscores together. And just like we can create italic text with just one asterisk or one underscore, you can create bold text with two asterisks or two underscores. If you want to combine both bold and italic though, you'll have to switch it up. Other things that are common that you might want to create on the web are lists. You use the asterisks and you type your text. If I want to preview the changes, I'll click the preview change tab and you can see that here, I've created my bulleted list. Now for some reason my second sentence just not drop down to the next line, so let's check out how we can modify that. It's because I don't have two spaces in between my lines. In order to create a hard return or a new paragraph, you have to insert two spaces. If you wanted to create a ordered list, you simply type one period, and then the list item, two period, and then the list item. So that would be more standard entry. Now I'm going to insert a picture. In order to insert a picture, you're going to have to have the picture published up on the web. I'm going to start off by making an exclamation, then you open square brackets, and then you would enter your alternate text, then you close the square brackets, and then you'll open parentheses, and you'll put the path to the image. The path to the image can either be relative or absolute. If you use a relative path, you'll need to upload your images into your GitHub repository. Since we haven't done that, I'm going to use an absolute path. So I'll change my alt text so it's more descriptive of what's happening here, and then I'll put in the path to the image that I want to show. I'm just going to be using a picture from my Instagram account to make this easy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a link. Links are kind of similar to pictures. You'll use the square brackets to specify the text that you want to be the link, and then you'll put parentheses and put the 
path or the link itself. So we'll actually have the text Instagram account be the text that is a link. And then in parentheses, I'm going to put the URL for the link. And we don't need this colon, so I'll just get rid of that. So let's take a look at what we have so far. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of this area and I'm going to commit the changes. So here's what my page looks like so far. I have bold text, I have bold and italic text, I have my unordered list, I have my picture, and then I have a link. And if I click this, this would take me out to the web so that I could view the linked URL. So these are some of the basic things that you can do inside of Markdown. Markdown is easy to use and mastering it will allow you to make sure that any sort of documentation or readme files are designed in the way that you like.